Hi, Mr. Wright here. Now, this film is for you if you are taking your Edexcel IGCSE Maths Paper 2F. If you're doing foundation and you're taking your Paper 2F on Wednesday, the 4th of June, then this film is for you. First of all, please hit like if that's me. Let me know that you're watching and let me know that you are preparing for your foundation Paper 2F next week. Hit like, tell me you're there. Now, in this video, I'll walk you through the topics that I think are most likely to come up in Paper 2F based upon what's already come up in Paper 1F and based upon the topics as listed in the LXL IGCSE syllabus and also based upon my knowledge of what topics generally come up and how often each of those topics come up. Now, remember, however, that there are no guarantees any topic which you have covered as you have been preparing for your Edexcel Foundation IGCSE exams could come up in either paper. But nonetheless, here are my predictions for paper 2F. Now, first of all, some number topics. Now, I'm expecting a question where you need to identify the type of number. For instance, a prime number, a square number, a cube number, a factor of something. Remember, factors fit in, or a multiple of something, perhaps. I'm also expecting a big mass question, an order of operations question, maybe one that you'll use your calculator to solve, or maybe one where they ask you to put in the brackets so that the calculation works out correctly. So be careful and remember your order of operations. I haven't seen anything yet on highest common factors or lowest common multiples, so you'll need to revise how to put numbers into a product of their prime factors, how to use powers there as well, and given two numbers, once you put them into their prime factors, remember you might be able to use the fact button on your calculator for that, then you need to be able to find their highest common factor or their lowest common multiple. I tend to use Venn diagrams for that. Set notation might appear. We've had a little bit of Venn diagrams, I think, but nothing on set notation. And I would definitely be ready for questions on percentages. In particular, I'm not sure we've seen percentage increase or decrease yet, or repeated percentage change, like compound interest or depreciation. Okay, and also I'm expecting there to be some questions where you need to use your calculator, perhaps to input relatively complex fractions or um, expressions involving square roots or cube roots or squaring or cubing. Right, algebra. Now, I'm thinking that you should be ready to expand two brackets. We often see this on one, if not both, of the foundation papers. And I'm also expecting a question where you have to set up and solve an equation. Sometimes these are questions about the total number of marbles that people have, and somebody has X, and somebody has twice as many as somebody else, and somebody has three more than twice as many as somebody else, and then you're told the total number of marbles that they have, and you have to set up an equation that way. Or sometimes there's a quadrilateral, or, well, perhaps a many-sided, perhaps a quadrilateral or a hexagon or any any polygon really and you need to set up an equation using your knowledge of the sum of the angles in a polygon. We haven't seen much of changing the subject of a formula there to rearranging something to make x the subject perhaps or to make y the subject. Um, just a small thing that could come up is identifying whether or not something is an expression, an equation, an identity or a formula. Okay, this is often one or two marks for that. Simultaneous equations, I haven't seen those yet, so that's one to revise. And I also haven't seen questions yet where you have to draw um, lines on a graph and then shade one side or the other, shading a region on a graph, perhaps the region where x is greater than 1 and x plus y is less than 4, or something like that. So those are my top tips for your algebra topic. Okay, let's move on to sequences and graphs. Now, I have there has been some mention of sequences, but nothing yet where you've had to find the formula of the nth term of a sequence. And remember, the sequence might be ascending, it might be going up, or it might be going down. Your difference between each term might be negative, so you might end up with something like minus 4. n. Um, there might also be a question about y equals mx plus c, perhaps drawing a graph, 
which is given to you in the form y equals mx plus c. Of course, you can always use your calculator to work out points on that. There might be a question where you're given a graph and asked to work out its gradient or asked to work out its equation, and it would help to do that if you are fluent with knowing how to use y equals mx plus c, m being the gradient and c equaling the y-intercept. And be careful, sometimes those graphs, they have different scales, don't they, on the x and y axis. Now, geometry. I think this is going to be a big one for paper two. We haven't seen much geometry, and coming up on the next slide, we haven't seen much on transformations either. Now, know your angle facts, angles in a triangle, angles on a straight line, and know about angles and parallel lines, alternate angles, corresponding angles. We haven't seen anything on that. I'm not sure we've seen anything on symmetry, have we? Reflection, um, mirror symmetry, where you draw a line of symmetry, or rotational symmetry, line symmetry and rotational symmetry. Can you name your 2D shapes? Can you name your 3D shapes? Compound measures, nothing yet on speed, Nothing yet on density. Speed equals distance divided by time. Density equals mass divided by volume. You might have learnt those formula triangles. Um, Dad's a saint, mum's a devil is how I remember them. Constructions. We haven't had anything on constructions yet. So when you have to use a uh, protractor or a pair of compasses or a ruler or any combination of those to construct a triangle is a common question. Also, we haven't had any bisecting angles or drawing perpendicular bisectors either. Bearings, no sign of bearings yet. So there's another topic where you might be needing to use a protractor, a ruler, or a pair of compasses. Have we seen Pythagoras' theorem yet? I'm not sure we have. And nor have we seen anything on circle formulas. Now, circle formulas isn't a terribly common topic, so perhaps don't have that top of your list of priorities. And finally, we haven't seen anything yet on similar shapes and scale factors. So make sure that you're used to working out the scale factor from one shape to another, and then using that scale factor to calculate dimensions on the larger shape or calculate dimensions on the smaller shape. Now, transformations together with, um, as we've already mentioned, bearings and constructions, Transformations is a big topic, I think, for paper 2F, as we haven't seen anything on it at all, and it's a large area of the exam board spec. So I am thinking of reflections, rotations, translations, and enlargements. Now, if you're asked to describe those, you have to give full descriptions, don't you? So for instance, reflect, shape something in the line something to obtain the shape something else. Rotate the shape something. Which way? Clockwise or anticlockwise? Through how many degrees to obtain the shape something else? Translate shape A by the vector something something to give shape B. And the enlargements, the information you need to give from an enlargement, enlarge shape A by a certain scale factor using a certain point as the centre of enlargement. So you might be asked to describe transformations and you might also be asked to carry out transformations as well. Okay, statistics and probability. Let's have a look. You might be asked to work out the probability of something happening. Often you're given a table, aren't you? And you're given some probabilities and then you need to use the fact that all the probabilities have to add up to one to work out a missing probability or perhaps two missing probabilities. And then sometimes you're asked to use that then to work out how many times you think a particular event will happen. Okay, you might also get a question asking you to place a probability on a scale from zero to one, of course. Now, statistics-wise, we haven't seen any wordy problems on mean. We haven't seen any problems where you're told the mean and the number of pieces of data, and then you multiply the mean by the number of pieces of data to get the total. Often there are problems around there. And I'm not sure we've seen a question where you have to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range from a list of numbers. And remember, you have to think carefully when you find the median about whether or not you have to find the middle number when there's an odd number of pieces of data, or the middle two numbers, and then go halfway between those to find the median when there's an even number of pieces of data. Right, that's it. Those are my predicted topics for paper 2F. 
Now, if you found this film useful, and I hope you have, I hope it's helped you decide which topics to revise, and then only you can put them in a priority order, of course. But I hope you found the film useful. If so, please hit like, because then the YouTube algorithm will put this film in front of other people who, like you, are sitting there, paper 2F next week. If you're unsure about anything, then leave me a comment and of course I'll help you out. If you're looking for resources on a particular topic, we'll check the links I put in the description because there may be useful links there for you, but also leave me a comment, leave me a question and I'll provide you with the links that you're looking for. Thanks for watching. See you in the next film.